Hello friends, welcome to another installment in the GABA series. Today we will be talking about how stress affects GABA and how GABA affects stress. You'll notice my voice is not normal and I do apologize for that. I'm a little bit sick, but I hope you can get through it. So let's get started. By the way, I'm not talking about anxiety. Anxiety being the long-term effects of chronic stress, maybe. And PTSD also being something similar to that. Here we're just talking about chronic stress and acute stress. First of all, we know that in early life stress causes a permanent or a seemingly permanent uh, downregulation of the GABAergic system. This is quite important because early life stress really impacts how our brain functions in general. So one of the ways that this happens is by a downregulation of GABAergic signaling. What this may do to someone, for example, maybe someone had a difficult childhood. Then when they're 18 years old, they wanted to party and they start using mushrooms and marijuana. They may be more likely to become schizophrenic because people with GABAergic deficits are more likely to become schizophrenic from cannabis. I've cited this citation in the cannabis video which I have on my channel. So that's where that may impact you. They, these people may also be more anxious overall in life. And as we'll see later, they, they also may experience less adult, at least less survival of the uh, neurons developed in adulthood. So early life stress is very bad for the GABAergic system. What about acute stress in adulthood? Well, in acute stress, what happens is GABAergic uh, transmission between, for example, hippocampal cells increases acutely. And this makes sense from our studies on neurosteroids. There is a neurosteroid called THDOC, that's the, uh, that's the acronym for it, I don't remember the full name, but THDOC is synthesized mainly by the adrenals. Um, by the way, uh, steroids are synthesized by the brain, by the adrenals, and by the gonads or ovaries. So the THDOC is mainly uh, synthesized by the adrenals in states of acute stress. So it's sort of an adaptive hormone to uh, allow us to adapt to acute stress. And as we can see, GABAergic transmission in the brain increases during acute stress. But what happens in chronic stress? This is where the dysfunction develops. In chronic stress, you have an increase of glucocorticosteroids. These steroids agonize the glucocorticosteroid receptor. The glucocorticoid receptor produces genomic and non-genomic effects. One of its effects is to increase the transmission of nitric oxide, which is also called NO, from hippocampal pyramidal cells. This nitric oxide, which is which actually vaso, it's a vasodilator, and generally people think of it as being innocuous. It's not. It creates reactive nitrogen species, which if they're not neutralized can cause damage in the brain. So this increase in nitric oxide causes the death of hippocampal cells, which are uh, hippocampal interneurons, which are very difficult to pronounce. I'll try to pronounce them for you guys. They're called parvalbumin positive interneurons. These interneurons die. The end result is a reduction in the abundance and uh, function of GABA-A receptors in the brain, and uh, particularly in the cerebral cortex. So basically, chronic stress causes a decrease in the ability to recognize GABA in the brain. So someone who's encountering chronic stress he's already stressed out, is actually destroying his stress protective mechanism in his body. And this may be one of the ways in which stress kills. There are definitely other ways. Now, uh, in terms of, uh, I want to move on to brain size. This is an interesting subject. So, as you guys know, in adulthood, uh, we have neurogenesis in two parts of our brains, and new neurons are born in adulthood as well. The interesting thing is that in mice, GABAergic deficits, particularly transgenic mice that are missing gamma-2 subunits of the GABA-A uh, uh, receptors, these mice have reduced ability to uh, birth, uh, well, in adulthood they have less survival of adult-born neurons, which means that people who have GABAergic deficits may be less likely to produce new neurons in adulthood, which may also limit the plasticity of their brains. So they're in chronic stress or, they, or they, their GABAergic deficit may be from childhood, may be natural, maybe from chronic stress, and they have even less ability to change their mind to adapt to their surroundings. 
then this may be indeed why anxious people have smaller hippocampuses because they're anxious, their HPA system, uh, their glucocorticosteroids are very active and their GABAergic system has deficits so uh, they end up losing neurons over time. We, knew, we lose neurons over our adulthood and we birth neurons so they're getting less of those birth of neurons. Finally, I wanted to mention some interesting notes. Blocking hippocampal neurogenesis on its own upregulates that stress pathway, the HPA axis. Also, transgenic mice who are missing, uh, well, well, they have reductions in cortical and hippocampal uh, GABAergic signaling, also have upregulated HPA activity, showing us there is a very complex system here in which reductions in GAB, in which GABAergic deficits produce increased HPA activity and increased HPA activity ends up producing GABAergic deficits. And neurogenesis being somewhat involved in this, blocking neurogenesis, also increasing the stress and the GABAergic deficits decreasing the effects of neurogenesis. So, I have to take a drink of water before I conclude. So, I hope you guys found this interesting. GABA is actually the main neurotransmitter involved in, your, in anxiety, in stress, and in all of those things. Serotonin, although it will reduce anxiety and do things like that, it does that sort of downstream to its effects on neurogenesis, to its effects on inflammation, to effects, its effects on GABA as well. GABA is the direct neurotransmitter involved in this. So I wanted to conclude, as you guys can see, this is a really complex system and it's all interrelated. You know, uh, dysfunction in the GABA system can increase this stress response system and the strength of it. Dysfunction in neurogenesis can affect GA the GABA system, or the GABA system can affect neurogenesis, and neuro dysfunction neurogenesis can affect the HPA system. Blocking neurogenesis can increase the chronic stress, which can get then worse in the GABAergic system. So it's all very interrelated, and it's something to think about uh, for people who are enduring stress or the outcomes of chronic stress, which are ill health, anxiety, PTSD, and so on. Thank you guys so much for listening. I'll see you next time.